a little rusty. I think my over eagerness to do like high ceiling relics is clearly a misunderstanding of the power of Century 20. You learn that very quickly. Like you learn very quickly. Like you can't afford to you can't afford to build too much in the future. You really have to focus on making your deck your deck as good as possible now. <laughs> well, to be fair, I haven't played this far in some days, so I'm probably gonna lose a lot of runs. We'll, we'll see. It takes a little bit to get readjusted to Century 20. Uh, I'm gonna go for the AOE here. Yeah, I got to say, I got to use Omori. There was a run where I had Omori for the whole damn fight. I want to transform here. No, I, I, I know I, I like skills, but I really like the potion belt and the capacitor. I think they're both very strong. Same blows on sale. Hmm. I'm not doing Serum Blow. It's, it's rather, kind of underwhelming. Defect Run has some good stuff going for it. Hardest and the easiest character to play? I don't know. I don't, I don't look at it that way. I don't, I don't. Honestly, I don't see any of them being harder or easier to play. I think the biggest battle in Slate Spire is you. Fighting against yourself and your decisions, and just fighting the spire, spire itself. Like knowing how to utilize that particular class's skill sets or cards to take on the spire, and that comes. The battle is within you about how, how well unknowledgeable you are to know what's coming ahead, and how you can be creative enough with the skill set you're offered, with the class that you're offered. So, like if I'm ironclad, I have different skill sets, strength scaling, and different ways to go about fights. Different different ways to go block with dual wields and funeral paints and stuff like that. So the battle is basically how creative you're gonna get and how ambitious or non ambitious, etc. etc. I don't know, I don't I don't see the classes as any more harder or difficult. But I would say Ironclad is probably if I were to answer, Ironclad is probably Hmm. I've i I've done really well with Ironclad. Like, I really like that deck we did the other deck, guys, where it was a deck full of Nambos, where I was doing dual wield Reapers and Funeral Pain, because it was just kind of a, a, just an example of the unconventional ways, or maybe not even unconventional, but the ways in which Ironclad can make block and become kind of broken or whatever, and utilizing all the tools that he has, like dual wield and Funeral Pain and exhausting and all that stuff. See, the thing is, I kind of want early... I kind of want early damage right now, because I want to go for these elites, right? So I think I'm going Hemokinesis. To be fair, I do have Twin Strike already from the Transform, and we have a pretty offensive deck. But I'm trying to... I'm trying to go for these two elites, so as a result, I want to make sure I get some more cards that can do damage. And damage usually can jump these elites. I think Hemokinesis is not my typical choice, but... It does damage. I'm gonna probably full block at that point because second Hemogenesis would have killed. So I'd maybe take a little bit more damage than I need to take. The Fiend Fire is massive. So we're very offensive right now. My problem here is if I were to Fiend Fire, I'm gonna get rid of my whole deck. So let me see. I don't know if it matters. It might be worth to do Hemokinesis. Just to take 2 HP now. Actually, I don't think so. I don't think I need to take that risk. I don't think I need to take that uh, extra damage. Because the fight should be won pretty easily. 
I'm gonna skip here. We need defense. Ooh, that's defense. All right, let's go. All right, fight this bad boy as well. And so yeah, hemokinesis obviously hurts a little bit, but the amount of damage to doing it, especially against these fights right here, basically means we got two relics, and we're relatively healthy. Strong run, immediately strong run. It was going looking kind of dire, and then ooh. Okay, so disarm is not very good against the slime boss in particular. But he's very strong. Was well, Shockwave? Okay. It's very useful. And it also gives us Paper Frog, right? And what this ensures for me is that not only will I get the Paper Frog on the boss for sure, because I have Bash and Shockwave, I should, should be guaranteed to have that. But it's also AoE vulnerable, which with Paper Frog could lead to some crazy things down the line. Plus, the weakens very nice. Um, Disarm is very strong as well. But I think for the sake of what my deck is doing right now, the Shockwave fits better. And we're going to take Shockwave. Yo, Dirt Drug. Good evening, it's Tag, buddy. Good Tag, how you doing, buddy? So attack pushing here is better for me. So damage is probably better as well, but because I want to be able to get a really big burst, boom, I'm doing it for you guys. I did it for you guys, I regret it. For me, I want to be able to, um... Mm, so that's a shop versus two upgrades, right? Or potential digging. So we gotta look at ourselves now and be like, okay, do we feel like we have what it takes to kill the gremlin? Sorry, the slime boss. I think with the attack potion plus the paper frog, the attack potion alone should give us the burst necessary for a good split. So I'm gonna go get the digs in and an upgrade in. So I wanna upgrade Fiendfire and I wanna maybe dig once. The thing about digging is like, it's so awkward because you have so many upgrades to do. Uh, I'll, I'll dig once, I'll dig once. This is second dig actually. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and upgrade. Yes. Shovel is just a bait. One, two, three. That's 48 damage. Damn. Damn, son. Paper Frog, no joke. Man, if I upgrade Fiendfire plus Paper Frog, watch out, boys. Fiendfire is going to be chunking. It's going to be insane, actually. This, 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 this alone is going to split. Happy flower, happy flower is coming on the turn as well. One, two, three, four. So it's going to be uh, 68. Oh, did I did the math wrong. 68, huh? Okay. Damn. It's a big hit. Damn. It's chunky, chunky. It sucks that I... Okay, let me see. It's too, it's too chunky. Like, I don't want to split him right now. I want to butter him up, but I don't want to split him. Like, so let's say I do this. It's 7 less damage. So 68 right now is doing... 72, yeah? So if I do strike first, then feed fire, he's, he's like a 79. Am I doing the math right? So right now this is going to be 10... Plus, um, 51, 61. Seventy-nine. Right? Seventy-nine? Unless I'm doing math wrong. If I'm doing math wrong, I deserve to mess this up. All right, cool. I guess it's funny is that I, I guess I can keep my, um, attack pot. Sure, why not? Honestly, I can keep both of them up. Right? Like, I don't have... So, I could split this guy. But then he's both... They're both gonna attack me. Whereas... I guess not that big of a deal, because we have Thread and Needle. I know Tagbot's another card. I know. I know. But I, I'm trying to save resources. I can save life here, right? So I can do this bash here and save life. And Cleave should be able to kill them all. So this is basically me trying to save life. You know, I could have just done it differently with bash, but this right here is an attempt to save life. There we go. Boom. 
min max. Alright, so we got Demon Form Impervious. Well, we also got Exhum. So let's, let's, let's get an Exhum. So Impervious is pretty good. But Demon Form is huge. Got Fiend Fire. We have Block and the Threaded Needle to, to be able to, um you know, block a little bit more with Demon Form on the turns we played or whatever. Plus, we also have Happy Flower, so the, if we don't get Energy Relic, we have some turns where we can play Demon Form a little bit easier. And um, we get, that Guaranteed Scaling is quite nice with Paper Frog in mind. Plus, we have Shockwave. If we ever find a Reaper, we're set. I think Impervious is very good. In a lot of situations, if I don't get Energy Relic, just in general, it's just really strong. The hallway fights. I think Demon Form is the better card. The only problem here is I have a very offensive deck. Now, we could argue this. Since I have Paper Frog and I have a very offensive deck, maybe I'm less in need of something like Demon Form to help me get damage. Since Paper Frog can do so much. Is it, Paper Frog is technically like strength scaling in a way, if you think about the damage that it's enabling. So without Paper Frog, I'll be doing, like, let's say, 10. If with the Paper Frog, I'm doing like 14, 16, upwards of that. As if I have strength, 2 or 3 strength, right? It's You can look at it that way. And then if you look at it that way, then Paper Impervious is just a better card because the deck needs block. But if you look at the ceiling, like I think we're now we're in a position now where we are like, uh, where we kind of want to look at the ceiling of these cards. We're pretty strong as is with the relics that we have going into Act Two. So I think Demon Form is better for Act Three, Act Four. Uh, I've ever got yeah, I got to zero cards before. Ooh. Huh. So there's some considerations, like Snekawai and Fiendfire is quite nice because you can get more cards with Fiendfire on Snekawai and that could just end most fights right then and there. Plus, we have some expensive cards like Demon Form, Shockwave, Fiendfire, Bash. So Demon Form may be played cheaper on, on average. Happy Flower also gives us energy to more consistency. We have Block, things get hairy. Fiendfire is going to be better on average. And then, the other thing is, Astrolab, get rid of three strikes, and make the deck better, and not go for Snake Away. Now, the one thing that bothers me a little bit, because, so, we're going to end most Hobby Fights with Fiend Fire and Snake Away, right? Now, if we were to, like, Fiend Fire most of our stuff, with Snake Away making that even more... Exhausting, so it's gonna get to like seven exhaust with Fiend Fire. Then the deck is even smaller, and then once that's left, let's say the fight's not over, then what do my deck? What is my deck left with? I'm left with like a shell of a deck that's pretty bad, and Snekawa is not really helping this consistency there. Trigger likes Snekawa, man. Uh, energy like also just seems kind of good, so we can kind of offset the one strength that they're getting with my Thread and Needle, right? And energy relic is just really strong. I just don't like the um whoa, I didn't want to click it. I'm trying to right click it. Yeah, that always that happens to me sometimes. Um honestly that I might have liked Ash Lab better though. The reason why I like Ash Lab better is because Well the one awkward thing about Ash Lab is like since Fiend Fire is getting rid of my deck, if I have these upgraded cards. Fiendfire is going to get rid of most of my deck anyways, right? But what we can do is say... Alright, so right now I take rid of these tricks. And Ash, Ash Lab right now is a little awkward with Fiendfire. But as I flesh out my deck and add more cards... The fact that I removed the rest of my strikes and Galaxy Knights upgraded cards... It, it, it bodes really well for like Act 3, Act 4 for this deck. So I think... No, I think I want to... Because I didn't want to actually click that. I was trying to right click and talk about it. I think... Ashlab I kind of like better. Nah, we'll just roll with it, whatever. I don't like Flusher Stone here. But it's too late. Just roll with it. Alright, let's go for elites though. Two elites here. I kind of want to get the sparkle out of the way, but I don't know how feasible it is. Do this.
kind of wanted to save that for the book of stabbing, but we might be getting potions before book of stabbing comes to play. Honestly, I could just prevent most of the damage. So I, I do two to myself and prevent the damage he's going to be doing. So if I block, I have six block, right? So three hits, nine. He needs to hit himself two more times. I'm taking four damage. The Thunder Clap with Paper Frog is pretty good, but I think we already have Shockwave. It's kind of awkward. It takes... I need... Block. I don't know, this deck is kind of weird. Toxic this early is still really good, huh? Damn. So that's not how it works. So the way it's why it works is that you're drawing two extra cards a turn, right? Right? So you have three energy, but you're drawing two extra cards. So you have, you have seven cards uh, to choose from. And the, the nature of the energy randomization of seven cards versus a hand of five cards averages out to three point something energy positive. You, you technically have an energy like in Snekawai just by the nature of the randomization and seven card draw. Now, there are turns where Snekawai gives you even more than even four energy. And there are turns where Snekawai barely did better than three energy relic or just like sorry no energy relic or maybe sometimes worse than an energy relic but on average you have energy relic in sneka y plus the card draw right and you can take that and utilize it in many different ways card draw enables a lot of different things but also you can take higher cost cards with it it, it just sneka y is very powerful probably one of the best relics I'm um, doing Toxic Egg this early. And uh, this doesn't really help me against... Ooh, wait, well... Because we get some block right now. I wonder if I want to get Power Potion for this. Nah, we'll go for this. Alright, let's do it. The damage is too good. The damage is too good. Depending on the cost of your cards? Yes. So, then if it comes down to like... You know, you can get even more efficiency for higher cost cards. So I like the Palmer Striker just because the card draw works kind of well to help find demon form at, on times, right? But also with better Fiend Fires. So Reckless Charge is something to consider. Now we're doing Pommel. Damn, son. 51 damage. Damn, Daniel. Can I get a... Give me a Reaper, please. I would love a Reaper. Give me the loot. Give me the loot. Ay, 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 ay. I'll take one damage here. Get honestly full blocks. I think the fight's pretty much over now that I have demon form out, but eh. Bitty. So if you kill the girl, that guy gets really mad and triple attacks. Now that's just bad normally, but it's particularly bad now because we have Philosopher's Stone, right? So Heavy Blade is a nice way to dump my strength, but sweet. I guess so is so boomerang. The only problem is I think the deck already has way to dump strength. In the form of twin strike and just everything else. Fiendfire. I need more block, so I guess Iron Wave is a good compromise between the two. I'll take it. Although, I don't know, Iron Wave is going to look more and more awkward because I have Toxic Egg. I'm going to be getting better quality skills, but right now I guess I just need to block. I'll take it. 
So block potion versus attack potion, I'm gonna skip. Mathematically speaking, if you want to win your runs, you get Sneko. Yeah, no, Sneko is very good. I think Sneko was not bad, honestly, but... I was thinking about Fiendfire getting too much. How much is this? Okay. I want to keep Trugrid in my deck. I also want to keep Strength Scaling. We do Attack Potion now, actually. Not bad. So the problem with Trugrid is that it gets rid of an extra card and makes the Fiendfire do even less damage. I, I think it's fine. Let's go, Sneko. Oh, I forgot to, uh... RP Happy Flower. I have talks again, I'm not getting any skills offered to me, boys. This feels bad. Do you want a second Twin Strike? The, pro the only reason why I'll take a second Twin Strike... The only reason why I'll take a second Twin Strike is because of the, um... Fiendfire is getting rid of some of my cards pretty often. And I would like to just do Fiendfire without having to worry about Twin Strike getting lost. And I can always have another one in my deck. But I'm going to skip, skip, skip. Alright. So we can we can dig again. I kind of want to upgrade the Demon Form or the Shockwave. We could also just keep digging. Again, but I think Spire Logs... Spire logs, it, it, sample size, you gotta keep that in mind. So you're getting sample size from people who, you know, who choose to upload to Spire logs, etc., etc. I mean, that data is still worth looking at and interpreting, and but the data itself is not entirely conclusive. No, oh, it's gonna be a tough fight for this guy, huh? So we gotta we gotta maximize damage here. I didn't take disarm. So fiend fire right away. One, two, three, four, five. Eighty-five. hundred and five. Honestly, I could take this hit, right? And go for maximum damage. Let's say I take a little bit less damage. Let's say like I block once. I still have enough damage anyways, right? With the next turn coming up. I can afford to take a little less damage. Let me just go full damage though. Um, I think there might be some merit to just blocking just once, but it's okay. Paper frog, baby. Paper frog. True grid again? Honestly, I just want block cards. So I think so. I'll take it. I'll just take it. I can't. My deck can't really utilize the second final pain, but but it's upgraded already. Cause and I just need block cards. Oof. Oh. Oh, you're killing me. Don't do it to me, game. Oh, take away my feed. Oh, feed is so powerful. We have no attacks to draw three cards. That's kind of interesting. Impatience is kind of interesting. With True Grit in the deck, Impatience might be really good just because I can imagine that True Grit a strike. I have two True Grits, right? So there's going to be a turn where I have True Grit, an attack, and Impatience. So I have True Grit, a strike, and I have some skills or whatever, and then I use Impatience, and I get three cards off for zero. I can imagine together, Impatience and True Grit is kind of an interesting combo. And that's what I'm about. 
doing interesting stuff and seeing how it operates. I think I might do it. Obviously, it's a Nambo with Fiendfire, so like, you can't use Impatience to get more cards for Fiendfire. And we have quite a bit of amount of attacks in our deck, but I think with True Grit times two, Impatience could be a decent addition. Then you get to think about all the other turns. The turns where I don't have True Grit, and then how is Impatience operating? And probably not that well with the amount of strikes that I have. Damn. I think maybe we don't take the Impatience. Mm hmm. You could get the Fiend Fire. I, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Oh, hello. So I'm gonna go for this path because we get Diggy Diggy. Mm hmm. It's kind of a Nambo. I kind of want to look for. I want to do more fights because I have Toxic X, so I'm, I want to find cards. Challenge is huge. Huge. So, Renite Challenge is doing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 15 to everybody. Okay. So, if I were to do this, it's doing 12 to everybody. Let me see. I got that feed though. We got Evolve. Evolve is interesting. Evolve Plus is interesting. I, don't, I can't really utilize it, but it could lead to some other card choices like Power Through. Because I have True Grit, so I both benefit from getting Power Through if I have stuff to True Grit on average, but also just could become card draw for Fiend Fire, etc. I mean, Evolve is just like a nice tech card. I don't know if I want to add it or not. I think if you have apparitions yet, yeah, it depends. So if you're on silent and you have wally plans, then your priority of upgrading apparitions is probably a little higher with wally plans and stuff like that. If you if you have discard, and quite a bit of discard, then your priority to upgrade apparitions is a little bit lower. It's very situational. But yes, typically apparitions are um, obviously better upgrade. But I don't know if focusing the upgrade is very situational. Saving the scene red, I think it's going to be pretty bad. Um, to draw into scene red. Well, here's the thing scene red It's sort of okay Because the deck has impatience, right? So we have card draw In the form of impatience And pommel strike sometimes Rather pommel strike impatience sometimes So scene red could be something but then you're adding too many cards that are just too situational, right? Like To find scene red and do it's just too it's just not It's not it's not I don't like it yeah, and also exhaust for Sharon's Ashes, but I don't know. I don't think I like it. This is probably a card I would have considered taking if I didn't take the Philosopher's Stone, so which is something I was probably gonna do. I think Evolve is kinda nice to have in the deck for those fights that do give us statuses. But that's like going into Act 4, even Act 3, late Act 3, Act 4. Our AoE, we have cleave for AoE, something. We take it. We take the scene red. Oh. I disagree. But yeah, it's kinda of, it's kinda of interesting. The more skills that I add, the more impatience becomes better. And you know, impatience becoming better is pretty good for seeing red as well. I, don't, I normally get used to have evolve, but I'm in a situation where I think I could afford to add some less than ideal cards. If we're going against slavers, evolve helps in that fight. I think I'm going to dig again. So 
So right now this is one, two, three. Fifty-one. Sure. Vol would be nice to have. I guess I can do hemokinesis. Got blood vial, it's all good. Saw weakness is very good, especially when it's upgraded. It makes this demon form a little bit worse, but man, I like spot weakness. Man, I like spot weakness. Transform. Okay, give me the creeper, please. Eh. I want to dig again. I don't really have upgrades much because I have the egg. Ooh. So. I could save Shockwave for the minions. Because I didn't take Thunderclap, right? And I, I didn't take into account like fights like this where Thunderclap is very useful for AoE, Paper Frog. I think we just use Shockwave now, though, to keep the guy weakened. I go for her every single run. I'll put, my I'll put something in my title. I've got, like... Let me see. I haven't updated this. I don't think. Oh, uh, we haven't updated that. What's up, Kazuchiya? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna use it. I don't want to drop back into it. So impatience is useful here. Patience and rage is a nice little combo. I don't want to practice damage on him, but these minions are going to get out of control. So just take care of them. It's kind of nifty, that rage. Worked out quite nice. Now that's a hit. The problem is I'm getting rid of my only source of vulnerable, and that's pretty bad. So that's a big hit. Could have been better, but eh. it, it frees up the deck. So now I'm just kind of drawing into block and um, you know my strength, strength dumping cards. Nice. Damn, I'm I'm, I'm smoking this guy. Boys. Yeah, Impatience is a very good card, guys. Impatience is very good. I think those colorless cards are very good. They're expensive. Reaper is amazing. I know that's impervious. Reaper is Reaper. And I'm going to show you guys twice. Alright, so we can remove... We can remove three cards. It makes Impatience even better. And we can... So we're more likely to find Demon Form if we remove cards. Impatience becomes even better. And yeah, we just find Demon Form in our strength skilling quicker. And the alternative is to go for this empty cage all the way. Yo, J JS Blatt, thanks for Twitch Prime and seven months in a row. Appreciate you. Thank you, dude. Welcome back to the Bowl, buddy. Thank you. How you doing? All right, we gotta go for Sparkle here. This is a problem with leaving it so late. So I want to hit the shop because I have a lot of gold, but I like this path better because I can get a recall, a dig, 
and then shop at the end. It's gonna be a very late shop. Hope for the best. Got Reaper to think about. Sorry, I should have thought about Reaper. Eh, it's okay. I meant I was gonna heal for anyways. So in flame? Hmm. At this point I already have too much. Okay, I have shot weeks and have demon form. In flame is just redundant. It's just another piece that I can find that makes me get online quicker, you know, get some strength sooner. So my so everything's better, but I feel like it's gonna slow me down. I don't, I don't want this. Anchor's interesting though. How was I in school? In school, I was a quick learner. Picked up things pretty quickly. Um, didn't need to study that much, usually. I, um, unfortunately, didn't have the greatest discipline. I played a lot of games, you know, towards high school and stuff, computer games and stuff. I performed well, you know, I was, I learned quickly and I understood things very fast. I didn't really need to study. But with that being said, I didn't maximize school as much as I could have. Now, uh, let me see here. Anger's kind of interesting because once we get rid of our, everything on our deck, like with fire and stuff, we could utilize um, Anger to dump our strength, right? It works kind of well with Rage and Impatience, and we can dump our strength with Anger. Anger's kind of interesting, actually. I think Anger's actually quite good. Unironically. The only problem with Anger is that like, if I want to play it to get Impatience to get its card draw, so let's say I need to play an attack, I play Anger, then I'm like I'm forcing another anger in my deck just to get impatience to be played, and I can see myself not wanting to do that sometimes. I can remember myself not wanting to do that. And we also got to think about: Do we even need anger for strength dumping? Plus, after our deck is exhausted, and then just for time meter. But time meter, I'm not worried. About, I'm not too worried about time meter. We have demon form scaling, and time meter we can one shot. Not, I want to say that a lot of need to pass. So let's say we have Demon Form already scaling. We could play Anger once or twice, and it's already maximizing our damage output by a lot, right? Because it's zero cost attack that is applying Paper Frog plus the strength. Nah, I don't think we need another Rage. I don't, I'm not worried about Time Meter either. Uh, I think it's very easy to not play Anger at all in that fight. I gotta look at the other fights, though. The other fights where Anger maybe. Just be better off not playing anger at all, right? Like, imagine a hand where I get like all attacks in anger. It's pretty shisty. It's very unlikely, though. Yeah, I think anger's good. It's a little bad for the heart. Mm. Depends, right? So anger could be for the heart. Like, say after we do fiend fire, because we just need to do it, thin out the deck, and get down to the nitty gritty defense. Anger could be a zero cost way to apply our strength and do damage. Or even go for the heart kill, maybe. We're like we're at the point where we defend most of the hard stuff. We try to go for the kill, 200 damage a turn, and we want to inundate our deck with attacks. And anger is a good way to do that kind of quickly. But I mean, I can imagine the heart is actually a whole other ball game. Like right now, we don't really have what it takes. We don't have disarm. We don't really have crazy way to get a lot of block. Best thing we're going for the heart is big reaper heals, and we don't have max HP because we didn't get feed. So the heart's troublesome right now. Alright, it's sort of troublesome right now. Yeah, that's what I mean by impatience there. But I mean, obviously, on average, this works out really well. 
because we just have so much strength at our disposal. I wish I had feed though, because without so a deck like this really, 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 really wants max HP, right? Max HP would have been really useful, so I can have time. But also, uh, yeah, we don't only have good ways to get blocked. So Twin Strike Plus is really tempting. So now I kind of regret taking anger because Twin Strike Plus, I would have rather put that in the place. It's another Twin Strike. I think we don't take Twin Strike at all. It's just kind of a bait here. I think it's a bait. So I think the Twin Strike Plus is a bait, and we just skip it altogether. Of course, it would be nice to be able to skip here. Yeah, it would be nice to have another way to dump it, but... Yeah, skip. Power Potion, though. Gambler's for how useful Gambler Brew. Uh, the store is going to have to save us. We need to... Ooh, found a store. That's max HP. This is also upgrades, which is kind of bad considering we have two eggs now. So what's more important, I'd say Corruption is very good because we have Sharon's Ashes and we can maybe find a Funeral Pain and break step open just a little bit. I also like Discovery because so, right now I feel like I need to add more to my deck. <laughs> and Discovery does that every single time I play it. We might have to also maybe look for like Speed Pot, Ancient Pot for the heart. We're not quite there yet. So I can take Discovery or I could just not. I'm trying to think. But this is not good though, because I already have Toxic Egg and I have Frozen Egg, right? So most of my cards are already upgraded. Apotheosis is barely adding value to the deck. And it's taking up a card turn. A turn uh, it's taking up a card slot in my deck in a turn where I, I play for energy. It's just not it's not useful, I don't think. I mean, Apotheosis makes it so that I can dig more, just keep digging or whatever, but I'm already digging as is, and I already have most of the upgraded cards. It's fine. No, 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 because we already have two eggs, guys. And I'm already... I don't think... So some of these cards are going to get destroyed anyways from Fiendfire. I don't think this is worth it for 200 gold. Does they play Wizard of Legends? Uh, I haven't played it recently, though. I, mean, I played it like for the update, but I haven't been playing it. I've been playing Risk of Rain. Backward does get rid of artifacts, yes. But there's a lot more I can do with my money. I'm gonna hold on to it here. I think Discovery could be good. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of thinking about like... Yeah, we're gonna be, need we're gonna be needing to do a lot more with our deck. For the heart. No HP and... Block's pretty bad. It's kind of scary. Damn, we have a lot of damage right now. That's crazy. This is kind of awkward. Uh, I, so, I guess I forgot to mention that the one good thing about... The one good thing about Pathos is that if I'm using Discovery, Pathos upgrades the cards from Discovery. Do we feel like Corruption is worth it to do now? If that's going to last five more turns. But at that point, if I have Demonform Scaling, I just do straight damage, right? Corruption might be worth the play. One problem with corruption is that I can't play anything else on this turn. Yeah, we have we have a decent chance of digging up dead branch. We do have a decent chance. We have a decent chance of digging up dead branch. One hundred percent.
The weekend's not going to last much longer, so I got to go all in here. The weekend's not going to last long after this. Alright, we can probably get a big Reaper here. Dual wield Reaper. That's pretty big, guys. So I haven't seen Dead Branch yet, yet. So uh, since I haven't seen Dead Branch in any stores, and we've dug up quite a bit, I think Dead Branch is pretty pretty likely to be dug up here actually. I think we're gonna take up a dead branch. I think you I think you called it. Also, so drop pick is kind of interesting. Because we're gonna have a deck become very small. And but I think the horse numbers for block I like better. It's another, another skill. Headbutt is useful for spot weakness and stuff, but I don't think it's so headbutt's very good, but I'm gonna take a block here. So dig. It's very strong. I know I got a recall once. Ooh, demon form. Only problem is we're taking some damage. How do we prevent it? Hope for the best. YOLO. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. I, uh, we have demon form. I probably should play corruption, huh? Since we have demon form already. We've already got our scaling going. This is kind of awkward. Um, hope for the best. Jesus. Uh, do I take the risk? Bum, bum, bum. Do, 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 do. Funeral pain. Oh, shyster. Okay, so a couple of things we can consider. We can go for the elite fights, and we get a relic from there, and also get a card choice, right? Plus some gold or whatever. So we're very strong to fight elites right now, right? Or we can just go over the campfire and dig. I think the elite fight is better because we get the best of both worlds. I'm going to use the bathroom real quick. I'm pretty sure we're doing the elite fight. I don't know if we're worried about... Okay, Reptomancer is probably the worst one because we don't have AoE. So we'll see. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, we kind of need disarm though, right? <clears throat> For these kind of, some of these fights. I don't want to lose buffer, so I kind of want to. I don't want to lose fiend fire. Like I don't want to use it now. Uh, this fight's kind of bad, I suppose. When you get demon form out ASAP to get the scaling, the multi attacks kind of suck, and you don't really want to lose buffer. But I'll do this, I suppose. So we got demon form out, which is not bad. I think anger is good to add one to the deck just because of the. Uh, I want to have availability of cards when he's like on these turns. So zoom for shockwave seems fine. Oh, it doesn't maintain the cost, right? Right, but it maintain the weekend, so that's important for me. I like, it doesn't make shockwave free. I don't have corruption now or anything like that. So fights like the, this, turns like this are pretty bad, but. So this is another, so this is bad, impatience is bad here. Cause I don't want to waste Reaper, Reaper can be my way to get back to full in this fight. But of course I want to draw into Corruption and Final Pain. It sucks that... Oh, uh, so you have to draw back into Reaper to maybe heal back up. Uh, I want to just draw back into Reaper here, potentially. 
The thing is, I want to play Evolve and Corruption, but I also want to do damage. So I think I could draw it back into Reaper now and be okay. And if I don't play Corruption, right? And Evolve is not that big of a deal. Obviously, playing Evolve helps for fights like for turns like that. Alright, so let's find the Reaper potentially. Hopefully. I should just end the fight. So the one downside of doing this this fight like this, this elite, is the fact that I end up taking a lot of damage. Unless of course I stall for Reaper. Ah, fuck it. Second rage, war cry? Mm. Uh, I think it would have been better, honestly. I got way too ambitious. I was like trying to do Palmer Strike for Reaper. It's better to do Corruption and Evolve. Get those powers out. So then I can kind of guarantee that I have good draws. And from there, kind of just win, maybe heal with Reaper. Probably was better to do Evolve Corruption. Anyways, uh, Rage number two or Warcry. I think it's a pass here. Warcry is kind of useful when it's upgraded. It's not that great against Channel, against Time Eater. It's kind of useful for like, so instance, for instance, we have uh, Impatience, right? We notice that with Impatience at times, we have attack we don't want to play, so we can use Warcry to manipulate that, and then play Impatience anyways. Sapphire. So we can go for another Elite, or we can say, listen, I'm a little scared of this Sparkle, let me not overdo it. Could say that. Oops, I forgot to do a uh, Palmer Strike first. Whoopsies. This is awkward, boys. This is real awkward. This fight is looking real awkward. I need my... I need my demon form. I need my demon form. Where you at, dude? Holy mackerel. I want to keep skills in my deck, right? So I kind of don't want to do trigger on any of the because I want to keep it for my corruption, fiddle pain. D from coming this late might be the end of, end of me here. Hmm. I think we should get rid of some of the defense, so we can start pushing for damage. No longer have the weaken either. All right. All right. Let's see here. Is it better to do spot weakness first? Kind of. Yeah, I think it's better to do this first because I want to find corruption potentially. Damn. Isaac, Albi, Albi, Albi. Yeah, my doggy was... I fed them, so when they... When I feed them, sometimes he tries to, like, mark in the, the house. I gotta... Are we dying? Bash is more important, no? Bash is more important? For big I fiend fire, maybe? I want to get Reaper before this fight's over. I need to get Reaper before this fight's over. I could end the fight, but I don't want to, so let me see something. I could end the fight, but I don't want to, so let's do this.
I need a big reaper. How do I make it even bigger? So dead branch is very close, guys. <clears throat> Their branch is very cool. Oh my god. Oh my god. These shops are very good things I see right here. Very good things, right? Alright. So we don't have AoE so for Reptomancer. So Warwind's right off the bat. Some great AoE. That I know we have actually Chirin's Ashes and stuff. But Warwind's very good. Bottle Tornado on Demon Form. Impervious. Plus, even, maybe even Pendip. But like, Bottle Tornado on Demon Form, and I'm thinking of obviously Impervious. But maybe we do War One as well, because we get, we don't really have AoE. And that could be... I mean, I guess we have Sherman's Ashes and we have Reaper. Oh. Secret Technique Plus. Yeah, Secret Technique Plus. That means we can pull up, um, you know, all kinds of things. So like Spot Weakness, Rage, Impatience. Yeah, I like tech cards like that. But it's very expensive, so... Oh. I want to squeeze in the Pendant maybe, because Pendant with Reaper, or just Pendant and Paper Frog in general is insane. Like, another thing we can consider is like making sure we get funeral pain out. As a, but I think training scaling is really important. So, how much gold do we have left? Like, maybe it's better to do pendant and impervious here. I like pendant a lot, especially when we have Reaper in the deck. Plus fiend fire, plus train scaling. Well, against the heart, pendant is only good against the heart like, for Reaper mainly. Aside from that, pendant is not that great against the heart. You mainly want to do pendant Reaper to get a second chance of life but I would say like with paper frog and demon form maybe pendant's not even necessary for reaper to be good value I'd rather save this goal for something else I'd rather save the goal for something else I think we want the AoE here or we can just pass there's one more shop in act 4 yeah but I think we want AoE for because there's going to be Act 4 Elite, which would be helpful for that Whirlwind. But also, the Reptile Dancer coming up, potentially. Eh, I'll do it. Whirlwind. The thing about Whirlwind here is that... First of all, it's not upgraded, which kind of is awkward. In fact, it's not upgraded. Second of all, I think... Evolve because of the wounds. I already have an Evolve in the deck, but maybe this helps me... Nah, I think Metallic is probably better. So that sucks, we lose our, our buffer for nothing, but it's okay. And then the wounds are painful. Alright, so we got a lot of good stuff. We got Fiona Pain, we got Spot Weakness. I think Corruption now, because we already have Strength Scaling going. I think we do Corruption now. I think we do Corruption now. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Do I want to kill that guy? I'm not even sure if I want to kill that guy. I have enough block as is. Could have killed him.
I gotta hurry this up because I gotta take my dogs out. I think we're just pushing for damage. We have some of the strength coming. I wanna maybe get the uh I wanna get what's it called? I wanna get a Reaper off. See if we can get Reaper off. See, I kind of want to draw first, because I can get Reaper. Ah, Reaper's not that important. Let's just go for it. Fuck it. We're very close, guys, to... Uh, we're very close to Dead Branch, I feel. I'm actually kind of scared to do the shop, because I think the shop might have Dead Branch, and I can't buy it. Like, I, I think that's going to happen. Demon Form is very good, but Shockwave is very good as well. So, the like, Corruption Shockwave is very good. Because with Corruption, I can just play my skills, and the, the AoE with the... Um, Sharon's dash is enough. Yeah, my doggy has to go outside, boys. I I can almost guarantee that Deborah's is gonna be in the shop and I can't buy it. Uh I think corruption is better, no? Uniforms are necessary here. Uh, this one I'm distracted. I don't even know anymore. Yeah, I just I'm taking my dogs out, guys. So we don't have the strength skinning for Reaper, but at least we have spot weakness, maybe. I want to look for spot weakness. God damn it. This arm's huge. Alright, boys, I'll be right back. Uh, this run's going pretty well. Man, a lot of the timer is getting racked up, huh? Um, so, again, I'm scared to go to the shop because. I'm scared there's gonna be a dead branch there. I mean, that's kind of a stupid scare. So what else could the shop give us? One thing we could consider is that we can use this fight to get use a region pot to be full health and then go into the time meter, perhaps another potion. We want more skills, right? So like, if we can find more disarms, that'd be kind of great. We want to find a weaken as well. What can the fight give us? Uh, I guess we'll go for the store. Oh, disarm. Huge. Alright, worth it. I think we just passed now. We could maybe think about doing speed pot. We find an ancient pot. Nah, then we're good to go. Alright, let's recall. What's up, what's up low games? XD, XD. I want to get the weakened. Maybe I just use the helix now to get the deform out. Let me see. Go for the weekend next turn then. Completely discovery, right? Because it, 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 it racks up the thing, but it maybe give me a power, case in point. Alright, so we can do it from out. Now, why don't we just scale up and we want to scale up and then we just one shot him. Interesting. I want to save Reaver so that Reaver can actually heal me back up in this fight. Yo, Champagne, man. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. I think we just defend and pass here. Potentially save Reaver for another day.
we might get to the point where like we're kind of thinking about corruption. So we're at 90 strength, right? And corruption basically makes our deck like each block that we play is more efficient because it's, it's the value of it is uh, you know plus four. So we can play less cards and block block for more with less cards basically. And then by the time we're ready to go, we have the the strength to basically one shot him. So I think we do corruption now. I think we do corruption now. We do bash to keep the vulnerable going, and maybe start looking for the one shot here. You know, Walter White. Yeah, Walter White actually threw a pizza on his roof. He wasn't happy about it. Ah, uh, that was kind of unfortunate energy here. Uh, let's play that then. Not bad, I, I should have thought about the energy there. It's okay, I wanted to get the bash. I'm kind of pushing because if I, if, if I if I were to get like Fiend Fire, I think we have just about lethal. Oh, of course that. So it's at two forty. He thinks right. How much do I have now? Fifty times one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, who's next? Don't 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 uh, So this is actually a bad fight for us. Excuse me, you probably hear my dogs. This is probably a rough fight just for us, just because of the fact that. Now this sucks, guys. This is one problem with having Shockwave and Demon Form on the first turn, is because I want to play Shockwave, and I want to play Demon Form. <laughs> and Shockwave because it helps me kill the minions and weakens the boss, and gets out of my deck. Uh, that's kind of unfortunate. This whole shockwave demon form conundrum. Relax, boys. Relax. Um, I have to be demon form, right? I have to be demon form. So we're gonna have to just not keep our shockwave right now. Still, still love, still you. love you. Thank you, dude. Tier two, eight months in a row. Well, and that, am I, am I not in a row, but welcome back for your eighth month, man. It's good to have you back. Hope you've been well. So this seems like a, a time for getting rid of anger. Let me try to think. If I do fear pot, I can kill one of these guys, right? But fear pot might be more useful for the Act Four Elite to, to kill one of them with Fiend Fire or something else. I think this fight is not too hard. Like, I think we should be able to just be fine. So let me go ahead and do. I don't know if I wanted to get rid of anger or not. I don't know. I don't know if I, don't know if I want it in my deck. It could be useful to go for the secondary kill on... I don't think we need it in our deck. Guys, okay, so we don't have the, the weaken. Hmm. I want to see Warcry. Maybe I can find like Funeral Pain. Hmm. Whirlwind is useful because with Whirlwind we're getting um, killing the Cultist and we get two energy back. Say I do Rage Whirlwind. No, say we do Rage. Well, okay. Say we do Rage Whirlwind. We get two energy back, and then we can. Kind of curious to see what. So they're both gonna die anyways from the center's being plus whirlwind for three. So I want to do discovery first. I have another disarm for the second phase. It's fine. Uh, honestly, it's not gonna matter. So the second phase, I'm gonna one shot it because I'm gonna have some strength. So second phase is not gonna matter. 
It's just a bunch of rap in his face. Yeah, I want. I want to do this. Interesting. Heavy is probably pretty good to have in my deck, right? As like a way to just one shot the sec next phase. Drop kick is better now. I can do bash, drop kick, and then whirlwind. I forgot, to, I forgot to do Rage. What's wrong with me? It's okay. It's not going to matter. It's kind of a kind of a mess up, though. Kind of a mess up there. I could have had full block. Okay, so we have a decent amount of strength. I'm thinking I don't go for the like we could play corruption, feel pain, and just play a whole bunch of crap. With the mountain strength, we should be able to one shot him pretty reasonably. Like what I want to do maybe is get rid of all my skills, so that by the time the second phase comes around, I'm already, I'm just basically killing him with attacks. So I kind of feel okay doing the corruption, feel pain now. Yeah, but here's the thing: I could do like um. Reaper heal in this phase or the second phase anyways. I'm not too worried, I don't think. I guess we could wait a little bit longer. So this, this I do corruption if we want to pay now, and then do twin strike whirlwind to, in, in, in patience, to play some skills. Just keep blocking, keep blocking, then I kill him, and then we just go for a Reaper and kill the next phase as well. Should be fine. I think it's kind of wanted to like use Fiend Fire for the next phase. Okay, but right now, for the next phase, we have some block options and then we have some damage. I think we should be fine. We also have a weaken potentially. I mean, there's a chance we have a bad, a bad draw. No, we have card draw. I think next phase should be fine. Do I want to get rid of my True Grit? Yeah, let's just kill it. Also, we also. Oh, I forgot that that wasn't actually lethal. Whoopsies. I figured I didn't need to do the math. My bad. That's kind of unfortunate. That was kind of a mess up. My bad, boys. That might screw me over. Might screw me over, actually. Not having fear pot could be pretty bad for the next act four elite, maybe. I, I, I'm probably gonna have to use fear pot anyways. I don't know. It's okay. There's nothing about it. All right. Yeah, I can imagine fear pot for the next. Honestly, for act four elite is really important just because of like the disarms I can utilize or just go for the kill. But we're gonna dig up something crazy here. All right, I lied. And it's gonna be Debridge in the shop. Okay, I lied. I just feel like Debridge is, is around the corner. Thunderclap here? Mmm. There's also Speed Pot. Hmm. See, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose my helix, but I also want to give her both the artifacts, so it's kind of a give or take. Give her both the artifacts, lose helix. The thing about helix is that it can block for a lot more coming up, literally next turn. And this is my only source of weaken. 
Hmm. Yeah, it's my only source of beacon, and uh, the helix is going to block for a lot coming up. Okay, we do have Reaper to heal back up, so it's not the end of the world. If I take damage, I get better draw anyways, which is kind of nice. So let it happen. Alrighty. We need to find corruption ASAP. Scary stuff. So, options versus spot weakness. If I get more scaling of strength, then I could. Well, Palma's huge, actually. Palma's really huge as well to just dump my strength and start doing damage to Spider Shield. How much strength do we have now? Five? There's no way we have five, right? Oh, because the debuff removes it, so we have five. Okay. And we're not weakened, so right now it's going to be doing 40 damage, which is all right. Battle Shield gives me more options here. So we can give you more strength to start. Mm. No, I don't die because I, I I use Iron Weave and I block and then the only thing about battle turns that I kind of like is that I want to get my Phenol Pain out, right? So Phenol Pain getting that out is very important. But at the same time, if I get this guy super low, the fight's pretty much over at that point. So I'm doing for the Phenol Pain here. Our top beautiful boys. Worked out beautifully. So Fiend Fire, one, two, three, four. I could kill this guy straight up right now. I mean, maybe not necessarily, but let me see. Alright, it's only it's not that much damage. We don't have Frog right now. I do want to get Reaper on both of these guys, or at least a big enough Reaper to heal back up to a decent amount for the heart. So let me see. Part of me thinking about getting rid of Chemokinesis with True Grit. So I can draw into Fiend Fire more. Op more. Hmm. Do I care about the damage here? I can get rid of this attack so we can draw into our better attacks like the Whirlwind, the Thunderclap, the Fiendfire, and Reaper. Where I can just go for the damage. I don't really want to waste Impervious. This might be a waste of a turn. It's very dependent on what I draw here. Actually, we got Thunderclap Reaper, which is nice. Alright, I think it's gonna be a decent turn here. I do say so myself. So it's very important that we get Reaper when they're not blocking at all, right? So like I know this seems odd to do like this, but it makes Reaper that much better. We win the game, boys. So the one thing we... Oof. Oh, my dogs are acting up. They're just gonna... Boys are gonna be boys. 
Okay, so dual wield is something I'm looking at here. I'm looking at dual wield because we talked about how Reapers are very important for us, so having more Reapers in the deck could be our way to win. Because we don't really have good block. And the guy has he has the uh he has Philosopher's Stone, so he has extra strength. So we're gonna be taking lots of damage. So I think we take dual wield for the off chance that first off, discovery is a thing, right? So we can get Discovery with Dual Wield, potentially have a, a Dual Wield Discovery, which that might be, that's free on that turn, so that can be really broken. We can get Dual Wield for Reapers, we can also get Dual Wield for Fetal Pain, etc, etc. So, Dual Wield is very nifty. Alright, let's go. So I want to play both the Shockwave and I want to play Demon Form. The only problem here is, we don't have Block, so we're losing our Helix. And that's actually very bad. That's very bad. I'm conflicted, right? Because the Helix is very important to block his big attack coming up. So what I need to do is actually discard everything with Gambler's Brew, get a block, and play Team Form. And then, of course, I don't have the Weaken, but not having the Weaken is not as important, I don't think, as Helixing this big attack. So we get a block. And we can even do Discovery here. And that might be a weakening in itself. What do you know? Best of both worlds. Now, of course. Now, of course, like, you don't know if he's going to do multi-attack or big attack, right? So it was worth it to keep the Helix for that reason. Now that he's doing multi-attack, obviously the Helix is less important. One thing that happened is we, draw, we drew into our purpose, which is kind of bad. But anyways, we need to, we're going to take damage regardless. The only thing that sucks is that next turn we're taking a really big turn. And we're vulnerable, right? And we don't have the Helix for that. So what I kind of want to do here is make Centennial Puzzle pop in order to try to mitigate this with a Disarm. So if I don't mitigate this with a Disarm, then the next attack puts me way behind. I mean, again, I could always come back with Reaper, but I, if I can find a Disarm now to mitigate this so I can have some more health to work with, I'm, I'd be happy. So I think I want to do Centennial Puzzle here. Since we are losing the buffer regardless. So I'm gonna do this. I'm doing this. Alright, so it was worth a shot. And now we consider corruption, right? So the fight's gonna last three or four turns, I would say, maybe even five. But getting corruption out now with the funeral pain means we get more out of our block. The only problem is I didn't do the dual wield. We still could do a dual wield on Reaper and whatever discovery he might drop. But we can only do it once. If we save Corruption, we can potentially do things like Discovery and do it multiple times. But since we have Demon Form out already, I don't think we waste much time. I don't think we waste too much time. Corruption now, huh? It's scary to do corruption now because I have to do a lot of damage to him. And I'm gonna run out of skills. Again, we can look forward to Reaper dual wield, hopefully. And Fiendfire can make some block as well. It's exhausting, so it's not the end of the world. And we do have disarms in the deck, right? So, we have ways to survive. Do you think we can do enough damage in that time with Corruption before it runs out of steam? Corruption's a little too early. Right, how are we going to drop back into it, though? Like... The thing about Corruption is I don't have to get rid of all my skills, right? Like, I could... I don't have to exhaust all the skills. 
And I don't know if dual wield is ever going to be something I play more than once, just because I don't have headbutt, right? So since I don't have headbutt, I'm not really going to... I don't know how I'm going to play dual wield more than once on average when I'm too focused on like just staying alive and then doing disarms and reapers and stuff like that. So it might be a corruption now. Trying to double check here. I mean, honestly, I would benefit a lot, a lot more if I wait corruption, right? But I don't think I have time. Come on, boys. No. I, I think there is a question to it, but I, I, just, I think there is a question to it. Oh, I do world with zero because it gives me five block. That that make that make the difference. I didn't wear one for for zero there. Or Thunderclap to in increase the vulnerable. Things like that. Ah, shit. That might make the difference. Uh, that would be how much more healthy? I could do both Thunderclap and Whirlwind for zero. No, I, can, oh, no, I can't do Thunderclap. Sorry, I can play it evolve. I can do Whirlwind for zero. Not Thunderclap, my bad. Uh, that would be three block difference. Okay, three block difference. See, I don't really want to get rid of Twin Strike, but at the same time, it's like... It sucks I don't have the Vulnerable up for Reaper, potentially. I don't want to do Disarm here either, so... Well, I need to do... I need to get rid of Twin Strike to survive, no? Or do I just die anyways? I have to get rid of this to survive. It's one of my best ways to tell my strength, but I get that. If I die, boys, blame the dogs. I blame the dogs. It's only three bucks. Hmm. Some monk ass dude. We don't have bash either. We need to find, try to find dual reaper. And this is the the nambo of impatience I was talking about. Nambo of impatience being fire. Here it is. I suppose we use this time now to use fiend fire to get rid of all these cards. But fiend fire is such a good block. Actually, a decent block, not even a good block. It's just a good way to get some block. God damn it. I think we're dead, boys. I think we're dead. So, if I don't keep any of these attacks, right? Because uh, next turn he's going to have the artifacts and I can't get this arm off. I do have dual reaper to save me potentially. I don't think so. I don't know. She's not going to be vulnerable. I need vulnerable so bad. Yeah, I don't know about this. Yeah, we need to get both the dual wield and reaper in the least. And disarm, yes, as well. But I think if it has artifacts, right? So we need vulnerable. To not only get more out of this, but just... I don't have a way to get rid of artifacts. We have a second shockwave in the deck. The deck's getting very small. And we, have, we haven't even dented his life total. Yeah, I'm going to keep fighting, but... Infect is better use at another time, but okay. So one thing we could I mean obviously things that we could have gotten that would have been nice, like calipers or something like that. Alright. See, if we do shockwave then we have to find If we get shockwave we have to find Thunderclap and do a world reaper. And then maybe that can save us because we can disarm as well. So we need to find Shockwave here. So what's the best way to do that? Ah, uh, well then I can't even because Pommel Strike takes two. But I need I need the card draw here though, so I need to find Shockwave. Flame Bear is okay. 
Wait, can I, can I do a heavy blade there? Was that heavy blade that was offered? And heavy blade dual wield? Uh, no, I think I want the block. Let's try to find Shockwave here. Huh. Uh, so not getting the disarm out is really bad for me. This arm out is really bad for me. But we got Shockwave to Sharm next turn potentially, so not the end of the world. There's a chance here. I mean, we do a World Reaper. There's actually a chance. There's a huge chance actually. So we have potentially Shockwave to a World Reaper. Sorry, Shockwave Disarm, Thunderclap, plus the Vulnerable. And we can have more Reapers to come into with the Vulnerable on him. Heal for a lot. I have such a, such a chance. I, I see the I see the writing on the wall here. All right. I see the brain on the wall here. Um, okay, so getting rid of slime. I guess slime's not the big of a deal because we have involved plus, so it draws for us. Now do I get rid of voids now? How do I maximize the amount of skills I like I don't want to play all my skills, but I guess it's four block. I do rage iron wave. So if I do one Reaper now, I feel like I'm not getting full advantage out of it, because I want to wait till he's vulnerable, right? I can get a lot more out of Reaper. So it seems kind of greedy to hold on to this. I might need it just to stay alive. Just to have some life, just to have some cushion, right? Like doing one just to stay alive, and then we still have two with the, the vulnerable, hopefully. Two should be alright. But, again, yeah, if, let's say I don't... You know, all that question is, like, the energy aspect of it. I can't play three of them in a turn so but yeah we can get a lot more out of them but the fight once we get the vulnerable paper frog we're gonna be getting so much more out of the reaper but also more damage and maybe the fight's gonna be coming to a close we, sh we need to make sure we have enough block to survive his big hits because we have disarm times two I'm not alive yeah well here's the thing I do rage on wave. Whirlwind. Let's listen to the math here. Four block. Two block. Two block. Three block. Five block. Eight block. Yeah. Get eight block here. Plus another four, right? Eight block. Plus four. Twelve. So we'll live with 2 HP. I live with 2 HP is putting this on the wire, but like, okay, we'll come back because we can do True Grit, Shockwave, Impervious Disarm. And we can draw into all this because we're, we're drawing into... I'm not guaranteed to draw into all this, actually. I'm not guaranteed. I'm not guaranteed here. And the third Reaper, I mean, who know, who's to know if it's going to get played or not? Yeah, I can live with 2 HP, but the problem is if I don't draw into the Shockwave... If I don't draw into the Shockwave, it's really bad. Alright, we got the Shockwave. So we can trigger the wound, but the wound gives us a card draw, right? So it's not too bad. And... I guess I could trigger the Anger at this point. We have an anger in the deck. I might want anger so I can finish off the fight in terms of damage. To have like a card I can play for damage, right? I might want this in the deck. 
So even if I do do disarm, he's still doing 30 damage, right? Impervious is not the worst card to play. Impervious is not the worst card to play here. But I could probably save Impervious for a better turn. Because right now what we could do is like... Sugar the anger of the wounds. I, I like keeping the wound for the card drop, but maybe we do sugar. It. Mm. Am I gonna need anger to get damage? You do. Imagine trying to have palm strike when playing like palm strike anger, anger kind of stuff. That might be very useful. It'd be very useful to have anger with Palmer Shirt coming up, and the deck is very small, right? So I need to like do a lot of damage. Like, I need to do damage now, and then I need to do damage next turn when he's doing nothing, and then I need to do enough damage on the following turn to end the fight, right? So I think I need anger for the damage here. With that being said, since the fight's not going to last that much longer, and Reaper's going to heal us, and Reaper's our way to basically block, I need to use Impervious as well. Or maybe we can still save Impervious. But either way, I think we true it. The wounds because I want to play anger here. Now, it's a little awkward just because we don't want to necessarily draw into anger. Because we want to we want to guarantee. Well, wound draws two cards because of evolve, right? So with evolve, when I draw to status, I draw two cards. So the wound actually helps me maintain anger, and make it less bad. Now if we do anger, there's a chance we don't draw into reapers like we want to. Uh, we still have a slime and a burn, I know. But now I can't get rid of them at all because I don't have true grip, but that's fine. I just want to make sure I draw into Reapers in a timely manner. Should be fine. I, I get it. I gotta push for damage. I save this Impervious, right? Because we don't really care about 12 damage. The long, this can block for a lot more. Seems to have a block, and then I can get closer to full. Nah. This is the turn to do Reaper right here. This is the turn. This is the turn. So honestly, I want to keep one Reaper. Maybe even keep one Reaper because I, I want to be more than four right here, I believe. But what we want to do is maintain. Um, so we want to start doing damage. This should buy us time to stay alive. I think we're fine. So let me go ahead and maintain one Reaper. So if I take damage next turn, I can draw into Reaper again and heal back up. I want to reapply the bash and the, and the thunderclap, and then end the turn here. So let's do this. I want to reapply bash here. I want to do thunderclap here. Well, I don't need that many turns of vulnerable. That's fine. So then we have to just survive next turn, which we should be able to. Only problem is the angers. But we have Pummel Strike. Should be fine. Should be fine. GG, boys. Quick run, actually, if you don't take into account the fact that we had to like walk our dogs and stuff, and it was mainly the, the bulk of the run was at the, the heart. Dang, Reaper Demon Form does it yet again. Best card in the game. Dual Wield Reaper yet again, actually. This 